we're now going to take a look at timecode and scheduled events within MagicQ. So MagicQ supports both internal and external timecode. If you were using external timecode, you'd set this up under Setup, View Settings, MIDI Timecode. Under the Timecode Decode option here, we can see the various different types of timecode that are supported within MagicQ, including LTC, MIDI, timecode over ArtNet, and if you were using a PC-based system with a USB MIDI interface, you'd use virtual USB MIDI here. I'm going to be using internal timecode, so I'll leave this set to none. First of all, we're going to take a look at QStack timecode. So if I go to my QStack here, where I've got these spot queues, by default, I've got this set up in queue timing, where I'd be manually stepping through my queues using the play key. What I want to do is I want to time this to some music, so I need some more specific timing set up, and I'm going to use timecode for that. What I need to do first of all is change the halt field here. By default, this is set to yes, so it's going to stop after every queue. I need to change that for every queue to timecode here. Once that's set, you'll see timecode values appear at the top of the window here and in each box here. By default, it's set it so my first queue is at zero and then it follows on at one second and two seconds. So what I can do first of all is I can manually adjust these values. So I'm going to set these up so it's hours, minutes and seconds. I'm going to set zero hours slash zero minutes slash five seconds for this queue and then zero hours, zero minutes and 10 seconds for this queue. So those are the times that those queues will be launching at. So if I now bring up the playback fader, we'll see the internal timecode has started running. Once it reaches five seconds, it's going to activate that second queue like so. Then once it reaches 10 seconds, it'll activate that third queue. So it's going to follow those timings that I've set in that field there. Another option we've got for this is if we want to say record our timecode while listening along to the music track is I can manually record that myself. So if I hold down the shift key at the top, one of the soft buttons changes to record TC, the record timecode. If I select that, as soon as I lift my playback fader, you'll see the internal timecode starts running like so. And when I want to move on to the next queue and set the value for that queue, I press the play key and it records that value there. Press it again and it'll record it for the final queue. Bring the fader down to finish recording. If I now play those back, you'll see once the timer reaches 9.75 seconds, it'll activate that second queue, like so. And then once it reaches 12.63 seconds, it'll activate the third queue, like so. So we've got a couple of different options for recording timecode. We can either manually enter the values or we can record it using the play key, like so. Next one we're going to take a look at is scheduled events. So again, within our queue stack here, say we want things to run at certain times and dates, we'd use scheduled events for that. So what I'm going to do this time is change the halt column again from TC to scheduled. Once I change that for scheduled, it's set up much the same way in that again, in the wait column here, you'd set up the hours, minutes, and seconds that you want these queues to activate at throughout the day. But what I want to happen is I want those queues to activate not only at those individual times, but I also want them to activate on a certain date. So how I set that up is using the macro field. If I scroll along to the right, I'm going to highlight the macro field and I need to type Z to start the macro, and then the date. So I'm going to say 25 slash 12 slash 2020, and then Z again to end the macro, and enter that in that field there. And that then says that at these scheduled times over along to the left, these queues are going to activate on the 25th of December, 2020, like so. So the final one we're going to look at is QStack timecode tracks. So QStack timecode tracks are really useful if you want to record various different fader movements and button presses across all 10 of your playbacks and activate that from one individual playback. So to do this, I'd go this time to view timecode here. And 
in here, this is where we start recording our tracks. So if I press record track at the top here, it's going to start running and recording the time code. And then I can start activating faders and flash keys for various different playbacks. I'll bring up this fader here, this fader here, bring this fader down like so. I can activate flash keys as well, like so. Bring this fader down and then say end record at the top here. And I've just recorded all of those actions within this window. If I want to play that back, I can, what I can do is set that as a macro within a queue stack. So if I say my front of house queue here, if I was to activate that normally, it's just going to bring on that queue. But if I first of all go to the macro window, you'll see what it's done is it's placed a macro into the macro window for that time code track that we've just recorded here. I can see that it's macro number 40 here, M40. That's macro 40. If I go to this queue stack here for this front of house wash and scroll along to the macro field, the macro for activating something from the macro window is B and then the number of the macro, so 40. B40 is the macro to activate that. Now, if I bring up this wash queue here, you'll see in a second, it should start running my macro. You can see playbacks are starting to activate like so, and it's gonna follow all of those actions that are recorded within that queue stack timecode track. So that's various different types of timecode and scheduled events within Magic Queue. We're now going to move on to look at multi-element fixture control.